Good night, good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night. Once again, it is a it is a blessing, it is an anointing to be able to join with you tonight as we worship and give God the praise, the glory, the honor. God is a big God. He is a good God. And as a consequence of experiencing his grace, experiencing his goodness tonight, we've come together that we might encourage and strengthen each other through our worship, through the giving of thanks, through the lifting up of the name of Jesus. And so I am blessed to be in your presence. Can I invite you to pray with me for a moment? to be perfect in all of his ways. The scripture says he is powerful. He knows to heal and he certainly constantly delivers. Our God gives sight to the blind. He comforts the brokenhearted. Isaiah said, even when we are forsaken by earthly love and earth to be perfect in all God of will his ways. Desert. The scripture God will not abandon us. And so, Father, we've come tonight in the volume of confidence and faith in the word that declares over us, come and worship, come and adore him, come and bless him, for God is glorious. He is majestic. His ways, the Bible says, are higher than our ways. His thoughts are not like ours. Scripture says he knows no slackness, none at all like we do, but God is. God's word never fails. And so tonight, Heavenly Father, we've come to you once again. Nourish us, we pray. Cause us to drink and never thirst again. Oh, Lord, let your well overflow in our heart tonight and change someone. Arrest some thought. Arrest some act. Arrest some 
confusion and bring clarity, O oh Lord. Bring deliverance, bring healing. Cause someone tonight to be healed. Cause someone tonight, God, to be set free. Cause someone tonight to, to lay off, O oh Lord, the chains of depression. Cause somebody to throw aside discouragement. Cause someone, God, to acquire again their confidence and their hope and their assurance in you. I pray, God, tonight that you will break some chain, break someone free, set us free tonight, God. Depression. Cause somebody to throw aside discouragement. Cause someone, God, to acquire again their confidence in you and their hope him and their assurance in, in you. The I pray, God, children. tonight, and so far that you will break our some prayer. chain, receive break some free, for we worship you. Us free tonight, God. We love you. Thank you, God, for Cause somebody to throw Thank aside God discouragement. Cause you someone, God, to acquire us again. From Sin and then the consequence thereof, and they are for changing the mind and the children. And so far, we will breathe a fire in the soul, dry the bone, and I for we watch the Holy Spirit tonight, God, this transform and bring us to true life. This world bring us to the light of God again from sin and the consequence thereof, and they are for changing the mind and the children. And so far, we will breathe a fire in the soul, dry the bones, and I for we worship the Holy Spirit tonight, God, this transform, and God will bring us to true life, and this transform, 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 and and praise God with our hands,
All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to invite, well, let me take the privilege, first of all, once again, let me take the privilege to welcome us this evening, welcome us to this wonderful season of prayer, whether you're joining us from across the Caribbean, whether you're joining us from our local church, all over the SDA church, or whether you're joining from any of our other churches, we want to welcome you this evening, particularly welcome you given that we are in this season of Mother's Day. Mother's Day today it is. And so to all the mothers that are joining us this evening in the worship, we want to welcome you. We want to bless you. We pray that God will continue to cause his goodness to shine on you as you can mold and fashion the hearts of our young people and help groom us into that which God requires us to be. And so tonight I want to welcome you on behalf of King Jesus. And may you feel comfortable and blessed as your hearts are open, as your homes are open, as you receive tonight the word of God and goodness of God into your home, into your life. May God bless you really well. Listen, at this time, let us make way. Um, Brother Nkomo, are you on tonight? Are you here with us so far? Let us make way as our brother come now and encourage us with a promotion. Nkomo, are you, are you on? Are you on at the moment? 
If not, let's take right when we will take our special music and we'll be right back with you. Let's take our special music at this time from Brother Colwyn Delph as he's ministered to us in the midnight cry. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can no more. Hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds a call. Yeah, I come tonight's cry. We be going home. I look around me and I see this prophecy that fulfilling and the signs of the time they're appearing everywhere. Oh, I can no more hear the Father.
Sister Gina, please go right ahead. Hi, good evening, everyone. I was speaking before, but I didn't realize I was still muted, sorry. My task tonight is to introduce the speaker, Elder Natasha, Natasha Allen. She is originally from the fishing village of Mayaro, Trinidad, but lives in Signal Hill, Tobago. She is the wife of the international evangelist, Roger Allen, who is also from fishing village called, from a fishing village called Charlotteville in Tobago. She loves the Lord and loves people. Her favorite Favorite text is Philippians 4.13, and she's the host of the Adult Lesson Study Panel on ASI Media Tobago. She's our, she is an ordained elder, a lay evangelist, and a lawyer. She is the author as well of a powerful and life-changing inspirational book and journal, Walking on Water which is available on Amazon. Before Sister Elda Aline takes up the platform, we will have a special item of music by Brother Ezzy Cardon. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Sometimes it's not always easy bearing Calvary's cross. We've been ridiculed by those who don't know him and mocked 
by those who don't believe. Still I love standing up for my Jesus. Cause of all that he's done for me. That's why I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, I'm not afraid to be counted, but I'm willing to give my Thanks is not enough to say how I'm feeling. I've got tears in my eyes, but I see me. I'm gonna keep on believing in the one who's been. I'm not out to please the soul around me. I've got my mind on eternity. That's why I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, I am not afraid to be counted, but I'm willing to give my Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much, Brother Ezzy, for such lovely singing. It is time for the word. I am not here to preach the word, but I am here to read the word. And after this, you will receive dynamic preaching from our sister, our our scripture reading is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 through 8, it says, Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zior, the son of Bishrath the son of Aphia, a Benjaminite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulder and upward, he was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish Saul's a father were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise. Go seek the asses, and he passed through among Ephraim, and passed through the land of, of Shelish, Shelisha, but they found not they found them not. Then they passed through the land, through the land of the Benjaminites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servants that was with him, Come and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in the city a man of God, and he is a honorable man. All that he saith, cometh surely to pass. Now let us let us go thither. Preadventure he can show us all, he can show us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to his servant, Behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring the man of God. What have we? And verse 8 says, And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of the shekel of, sil of silver that will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. This is the reading of the word of God. Roger? Happy Sunday, everyone. I'm trying to take off that background. Just give me one moment. All right, so I'm unable to remove that background, so let's go ahead. I hope you are seeing me clearly. If you are seeing me clearly, give me a thumbs up. We see you, my sister. We see you loud and clear, loud and clear. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Elder Weeks. Happy Sunday to one and all, and happy Mother's Day to all mothers on this 
platform here this evening. Um, my mother is here, Cheryl Batiste. My sister is here, Nicole Brown Perez. And I also have a sister that I've, I've invited, who might be on as well, Suzette, Sister Corbin, Sister Ria, and others. My husband is also on evangelist, Roger Allen. So everybody at the Olivet SDA Church, happy Sunday. And I trust you had a wonderful day. Thank you, Brother Weeks. Thank you to the pastor, the church board, and members of the Olivet SDA Church in Guyana for this opportunity to minister in this virtual space this evening. A fun fact for you, Olivet SDA Church was the first church my husband, Evangelist Roger Allen, preached in Guyana, yes, while he was still attending USC back in 2015, and thereafter, he preached in many other churches in Guyana. So all my women on here this evening, happy Mother's Day again, and I trust that you will continue to enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you so much, Mr. Thompson, for your warm welcome. And thank you to all those who went before. Everything has been wonderful so far. Topic for this evening, inconsequential incidents may lead to divine destiny. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to delve into your word one more time. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise this evening. And we trust, O oh Lord, that you would minister to the specificity of each need. As I expound on your word, I pray that every listener would listen to your voice to hear the message that is directed to them. To each of us this evening, you have a message. May we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. So whether you are at church, whether you are on Zoom, whether you're on YouTube, in your cars, in your homes, wherever you may be this evening, a warm welcome to you. Pastor Carolyn Brandon would have expounded on 1 Samuel 8 last week, which is the backdrop to 1 Samuel 9, which is what I'll be looking at this evening. I would just recap a few highlights for those who missed it as we transition to chapter 9. Samuel the prophet was old by this time. He was a man of God standing before God. However, his sons did not follow in his faithful stead and did not walk in the way of the Lord. The people protested for a king. The people protested for a king. Samuel in grief prayed to God. God comforted him and told him to yield. Thank you. God comforted him and told him to yield to the yeah. impossibility um. of the people. Give them what they want. It is not that they have rejected you. They have rejected me, said God. This was not God's plan for his people. Suffice it to say that God allowed them to have what they wanted over what they needed. They wanted a visible king, but what they needed was the king of kings. Even though they were given a clear description of what the earthly king will do, the oppression, the disadvantage, the trouble they will face, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and demanded a king so that they will be like him. other nations around them. Let's pick up the story here. My brother who went before me, he read from 1 Samuel chapter 9, King James Version, verses 1 through 8. Find it in your Bibles. Find it in your Bibles because we will be referring to these verses in 1 Samuel 9. So keep your fingers on this chapter. Saul is described as coming from a good family, hailing from the tribe of Benjamin. His father, Kish, was a man of influence and wealth. One meaning of Kish, which I, which I was drawn to, is the bow of God. I hope somebody got that. The bow of God. Applying this meaning means that if Kish is the bow of God for delivering Israel from the hand of the surrounding nations, then follow me here, there must also be arrows in his quiver. Saul, it seems, was that arrow, if you please. Saul, whose name in Hebrew, Shaul, meant asked 
of God or lent to God with towering shoulders and towering heads, head rather, and shoulders over his peers, he won the favor of those around him. Notice though that while Saul's father is mentioned, Saul's mother is omitted. Today is Mother's Day, so Elder Weeks, I couldn't help but notice the omission. In many instances in biblical genealogies, or oh, they only mention the male. But mothers, mothers, mothers here today, I want to let you know that you are important. There would have been no Saul without his mother, unnamed though she be. None of us would be here without our mothers. Even when your name is, is not written or your name is not mentioned, mothers, know that you are important to God. And make sure, make sure that even if they don't call your name here, Make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Do your best with your children that God has entrusted to you because they might just be the next king of Israel, if you please. They may just be the next leader of Israel, if you please. And mothers, God will reward you in due time. So Saul had a good family lineage. He was handsome. He was taller than everyone around him. A kind of structure, if you please, as the basketballer Clay Thompson or LeBron James, if you are into that sport. Sometimes, sometimes I want to let you know that great blessings are gift wrapped in seemingly inconsequential incidents or insignificant duties. On what apparently inconsequential incident does the destiny of races and people often depend? This promising, fine, handsome, tall specimen of a man was sent to do what seems to many a menial task. He was sent in search of lost donkeys. Huh. His father could have sent the servants alone, couldn't he not? But he chose to send Saul with one of the servants. You see, you see my friends, Saul had to go on this seemingly insignificant journey, this seemingly inconsequential journey to access his blessing, to access his destiny. But don't miss it, don't miss it my friends. Luke 16, 10 tells us, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Moses, Moses had the seemingly menial task of rearing sheep for 40 years in the desert before he was called, anointed, and appointed to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Her Jesus remember, Jesus was born in a stable, an insignificant place. Yet he fulfilled the most significant task, that of saving the world from sin. I want to let you know that it doesn't matter where you are from. All that matters is what God wants to do with you and how you avail yourself to be used by him. Sometimes, sometimes many of us want the spotlight without the sacrifice. Sometimes many of us want the fame without the name to support it. Sometimes, sometimes many of us want the position without the training to handle it. Sometimes, my friends, sometimes conferred and sought after doctorates without the anointing by God is rampant, rampant right now in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Many want the accolades without God's anointing and appointing. I've come by here to tell somebody on this virtual platform that the process God takes you through is for a reason and will only take a season. Let me repeat that. The, 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 the process God takes you through is for a reason and will only take a season. But after you have mastered the reason and expired the season, God will unwrap the gift wrap the blessings disguised in unseemly insignificant duties and you will then understand the significance of the reason and the season. Did you get that, my friends? I trust you get out repeated. God takes you through what the process God takes you through is for a reason. 
and will only take a season. But after you have mastered the reason and expired the season, God will unwrap the gift wrapped blessings, this guy that seemingly insignificant duties, and then you would understand the significance of the reason and the season. So don't miss the donkey chase. Don't miss the donkey chase. It is in the task, the seemingly insignificant, inconsequential task that your divine destiny may be revealed. In fact, 1 Samuel 10, 14 says, then Saul's uncle said to him and his servant, where did you go? So he said, to look for the donkeys. When we saw that they were not, they were nowhere to be found, we went to Samuel. Ah, my friends, is it, can it be that you find yourself chasing donkeys this evening? I want to let you know, don't give up. It is in the donkey chase that God's training happens. This is where God prepares us for the position for which he has called us. Can I tell you this evening that there will be something along, along your life's journey that you don't want to do. There'll be some things along your life's journey that you don't like to do. There'll be some things along your life journey that you don't, that you wish you didn't have to do. But if God sends you to look for donkeys, I want to tell you to go. Go look for the donkeys because it is in that that your divine destiny will be revealed. Am I speaking to anybody here this evening? I've come by here to tell somebody that it is in the going that you receive the blessing. Before I go on, I want to let, I want you to type in the chat, go chase donkeys if that's what God called you to do. My second point, therefore, it is in the going that you receive of the blessing. Ask Abraham, well, Abraham later calls Abraham. God told him to get up from that which was familiar and go to that which was unfamiliar. Get up, I want to tell somebody today. Get up from that which is comfortable and go, go where God sends you. That's what he wants us to do. Many of us would not have done what Abraham did. Many of us would have been too proud to go chasing donkeys. Saul might have told his father, Kish, hello, daddy, send the servants to chase for the donkeys. I've got more important things to do. Ask the 10 lepers in the New Testament. Jesus told them, go and show yourself to the priests. It was in their going that they received their healing. When God told Abraham to go to an undisclosed location, it was in his going that he received his blessing. Am I speaking to anybody here this evening? You see, brethren and friends, going demonstrates obedience. Type in the chat, going demonstrates obedience. Paul and the servant had searched everywhere, it seemed. And when you look at verse 4, verse 4 tells us that they searched the mountains of Ephraim to the land of Shalisha. They searched Shalem. They, then they passed through the lands of Benjamin. But they came up empty. Nada, nil, zilch. Imagine their exhaustion and their frustration by this time. Huh. Saul was about to give up. He told his servant, let us go back home. <laughs> let us go back home. Let us return to daddy before he stops worrying about the donkeys and start worrying about us. Let's go back home was Saul's suggestion. Sometimes, sometimes like Saul, we too feel like giving up when things get rough and it seems as if there is nothing to be gained out of our labors. Sometimes we feel like giving up when there nothing to be gained it seems from our labors at home our labors at church our labors at the workplace our labors at our universities or schools but it is just the time you need to persist and maintain a winner's mindset do i have some winners on the chat here this evening do i have some winners on youtube this evening i read somewhere character consists of what you do in the third and fourth tries winners never quit and quitters never win persist my friends 
So the servant, the servant told Saul, no, no, no. <laughs> We ain't going back home now. There is in the city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. Let us go to him. Saul said, well, if we go, if we go, if we go, what will we bring to the man of God? The, the, the servant said, well, here's what I have, a one-fourth of a shekel of silver. I will give that to the man of God. Then Saul said to his servant, well said. Come, let us go in verse 10. Come, let us go. So they went to the city where the man of God was. My next point is this. Surround yourself with winners if you want to win. <laughs> Type that in the chat. Surround yourself with winners if you want to win. Saul felt like giving up. Saul felt like quitting. But the servant was able to give a brilliant suggestion. And amid Saul's protests and Saul's excuses, the servant backed up his suggestion with his money. I know, I know, I know, I know. We know the saying. Put your money where your mouth is. I've come by here to tell somebody, surround yourself with strong-minded people. Support on your journey is important. God the Father didn't just put Jesus on the earth to fend for himself. Jesus was born into a family. We all need supportive, positive, faith-filled, optimistic, yet realistic people around us. People who are not just willing to tell you what to do to achieve the goal, but they are willing to help you to achieve the goal. They are, and that's the saying, put your money where your mouth is, is exactly what the servant did. You need people like that around you. And you must be willing to be that support too for others around you. Paul didn't have to listen to the servant. After all, he was just a servant. But Paul listened anyway. Sometimes the suggestion may come from somebody who in our human estimation is subservient to us. Huh, do I have anybody here who's listening? They are subservient to us, we think, so we do not listen to them. There are some pastors, if you please. There are some managers, if you please. Some leaders, some presidents, some CEOs, some governments, uh, some, some parents, some officials, all guilty of this. They fail to listen to the common man, the member, the employee, the citizen, the child. Who are they to tell me, somewhat in authority, what to do? It took humility on Saul's part to listen to the servants. We see here already fine qualities coming out in Paul through this experience. Willingness to carry out seemingly insignificant tasks. Faithfulness in little things. Obedience in his going and humility in his, in his listening. Let's continue the story in verse 11. I told you to get your Bibles. I trust you have it with you. The word of God says, as they went up the hill to the city, they met some young woman going out to draw water and said to them, is the seer here? And they answered them and said, yes, there he is just ahead of you. Hurry now for today. He came to this city because there's a sacrifice of the people to be on the high place. As soon as he comes to the city, you will surely find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he comes because he must bless the sacrifice. Afterward, those who are invited will eat. Now, therefore, go up. For about this time, you will find him. So they went up to the city. As they were coming into the city, there was Samuel coming out toward them on his way up to the high place. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear the day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him commander over my people Israel, that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cries have come to me. So when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, there he is, the man of whom I spoke to you, this one shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, please tell me, where's the seer's house? Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place, for you shall eat with me today and tomorrow I will let you go and I will, let, I will tell you all that is in your heart. But as for your donkey that were lost three days ago, do not be anxious about them, for they have been found. Let's pause here for a moment. 
as I interject this point to somebody here on this platform, don't be anxious over the things you have lost. Don't be anxious over the things you have lost. Saul did not ask Samuel about the donkeys, but Samuel quelled the anxiety of Saul. The donkeys that were lost three days ago, they are found. I want to ask you a question this evening. Have you lost something? Ah, what might it be? Have you lost a job? Have you lost a relationship? Have you lost somebody there in your life? Have you lost some? some account that you would have invested in, some business you, you would have invested in, whatever it is, I declare to you today that it is found. Stop worrying about that which you have lost. God has something greater in store for you. Let me remind a sister of the promise in Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing. Hallelujah. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. God. Let me remind a brother on this platform here this evening of the promise in Isaiah 65, 24, and it shall come to pass that before you call, I will answer. And while you are yet speaking, I will hear, says the Lord. That thing, that thing you have lost, do not be anxious about it. God knows where it is. He says to you today, do not be anxious about them, for they have been found. Uh, don't sweat over it. Give it to God. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. Today, I want to let somebody know you can begin your praise party even before you see the reality. Begin your praise party before you see the reality. You may have seen things going on in your life right now and you, and you feel as if all is lost. You have lost your mind. You, you, you are dismayed. But what I want to encourage you today in Romans 12, 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't lose your mind to this world. Give your mind to God and he will take care of the things you have lost. You may even feel lost right now lost spiritually but don't be dismayed hallelujah for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost do i have somebody here who is shouting amen because of the salvation god has offered to you could i tell you this evening that god specializes in finding the lost and rejoices when the lost is found. Her verse 20 continues by saying, and on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on you and on all your father's house? And Saul answered and said, am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Why then do you speak like this to me? Saul did not recognize Samuel the prophet. But Samuel the prophet recognized in Saul the future king and leader of Israel. I hope you got my next point. God had already gone before Saul and spoken to Samuel about him. God had already given Samuel Saul's resume, if you please. God had already approved Saul's anointing and appointing before he met Samuel. Friends, my point is this, God goes before you. Don't be afraid of what man can do. Always be aware of what God can do. Let me repeat that in case you missed it. Don't be afraid of what man can do. Always be aware of what God can do. They said, they said, I wasn't good enough for that job, but I got it anyway. God went before me. Do I have a witness here this evening? They said you weren't good enough for that promotion, but you got it anyway. God went before you. They said you would never get that dream car, but you got it anyway. Do I have somebody here? God went before you. They said you would be single all your life, but you got married anyway. God went before you. They said you were a nobody, but God made you somebody. God went before you. They said you would amount to nothing, but look at you now and look at you a few years from now. God went before you.
before you. Do I have a witness here this evening? I've come by here to tell somebody, don't be concerned about what they say. Don't be concerned about they say, because God has the final say. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God has the final say. Verse 22, follow me in your Bible. Now Samuel took Saul and his servants and brought them into the hall and had, and had them sit in the place of honor among those who were invited. There were about 30 persons. 30 persons. Saul had not met Samuel as yet, but there was already a place set for Saul. For, for Saul. Friends, I want to let you know that there's a place already set for you. You don't have to fight up. No, 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 my friends. When you walk with the Lord in the light of his way, what a glory he sheds on your way. You don't have to fight up. God fights for you. There was already a place of honor set there for Saul. I want to let you know, you may have come from the smallest tribe. You may have come from a, a place that nobody knew of. I came from a small fishing village, I told you, called Mayaro. But hallelujah, I thank God. Even as they asked Jesus, what good can come out of Nazareth? I want to let you know that God has already set your place of honor somewhere. All you need to do is to be faithful and God will do the rest. And he told them, bring the portion which I gave you of which I said to you, set it apart. In other words, Saul's meal was already set apart for him. <laughs> I want to tell somebody here this evening, tell somebody here this evening, you may be worried about where your next meal is coming from, where your next rent is coming from, where the mortgage is coming from, where the money to pay the car is coming from. I want to let you know that God has already set it apart for you. Don't worry about it. You have that medical bill to pay. Don't worry about it. Just pray about it and leave the rest to God. God has already set it apart. Did I hear somebody say amen today? The cook took up the thigh with its upper part and he set it before Saul and Samuel said, here it is. What was kept back, it was set apart for you eat for until this time it has been kept for you since I said I invited the people so Saul ate with Samuel that day when they had come down from the high place into the city Samuel spoke with Saul on the top of the house they arose early and it was about the dawning of the day that Samuel called to Saul on the top of the house saying get up and I may send you on your way. And Saul arose and both of them went outside, he and Samuel. And they were going to the outskirts of the city. Samuel said to Saul, tell the servant, go on ahead of us. And he went on. But you stand here a while that I may announce to you the word of God. And permit me to just go over to chapter 10, verse 1 to complete this message. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, It is not because the Lord has, is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? Saul is now anointed as king. What a twist in the narrative. God in his divine wisdom allowed the donkeys to be lost so that Saul's father could send Saul and his servant to look for the donkeys which they did not find so that Saul could connect with Samuel to be anointed. Hallelujah. I hope you didn't get that. Sometimes, sometimes, my friends, sometimes God will take his anointed through some kind of places, through some kind of experiences they wouldn't ordinarily go through in order to fulfill his purpose. Is there anybody here who knows what I'm talking about? So there will be some uncomfortable places for you to go through. You may have even already been through some uncomfortable places. This. Have you seen how God has worked it out for your good? In fact, Romans 8.28 says, for God works all things together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. 
if God sends you to chase donkeys, go. Because his divine, your divine destiny is wrapped up in your obedience to the call to go. You see, God wants to know if you will be faithful in even chasing donkeys. If you'll be faithful in the littles that he can give you more. But sometimes when God calls us to little, we say, now nah, God, that was small for me. You hold on to that. But little becomes much. So when you place it in the master's hand, I want to let you know that even if you get crumbs from the hands of God, it is plenty. It is enough for you at that time. Saul had to pass through five places before he came to Samuel. I want to let you know this evening, you may have to pass through some things. You may have to pass through some circumstances, pass through some places, pass through some people, pass through some experiences to get where God wants you to get to. But don't miss the process. Because if you miss the process, then you will miss the blessing. My final point comes in the form of a question rather than a statement. Were you anointed by God or appointed by men? I've been an elder for over 10 years. I've sat on nominating committees in the church and on committees at mission level. Often we pray before nominating committee, but sometimes I wonder if it's just a formality. You see, sometimes, sometimes it's an indictment against us, but sometimes there's campaigning, much campaigning, similar to the politics of the world. Rather than much praying, don't miss it. Sometimes there's much campaigning than much praying for our leaders' selection and election. As a church, sadly, in the high position and even at local church level, many people in the positions are not anointed by God for that position. But they were appointed by those who liked them. They were appointed by their friends. They were appointed by those who listened to them and those to whom they, they adhered to. Samuel was so anointed as a prophet of God that God revealed to him exactly whom God wanted to anoint as captain and king, as commander over his inheritance. Friends, I read somewhere that anointing, listen to this, anointing is a sign of God equipping you to fulfill an assignment he has given you. Anointing is a sign of God equipping you to fulfill an assignment he has given to you. When he gives you an assignment, a plan or a strategy, he is going to empower you. I remind you today, the one who calls you is faithful and he will accomplish a task for which he has called you. Jeremiah 1.5 declares, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I adorned, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. I've come by here to tell somebody as I close, when God anoints you, he can override the appointment of men. Do not fear. Do not miss the point. You may still be in the chasing donkey's phase of your experience. But you won't always chase donkeys because what God has anointed you to will one day be revealed. What God has called you to, to right now in this moment, do it. Because the training ground is now for the big blessing God has in store for you. But first, He wants to know if you are faithful in the little. You may be working at a job right now that only pays $5,000 a month, but probably in Guyana, that would be about $20,000 a month. And you may be praying for God to give you a better job, a, a better paying job. But right now you are not returning tithe on the amount that you are receiving. You are not being faithful. How do you expect God to place more into your hands? 
friends, as I close, know that God has already ordained you. He has already sanctified you. He has already anointed you and he's already appointed you for a task. And no man, no woman can take that task away from you. Somebody just sent me on the chat that the minimum wage in Guyana is $70,000. Wow. So whatever it may be, whatever you may be working for now, I'm saying that sometimes you are praying for more, but you are not faithful with that which is little. So God wants you to be faithful now and he will do the rest. Friends, inconsequential incidents may lead to divine destiny. May God help us all that we would hear his voice even in the un inconsequential incidents so that we can access the divine destiny God has in store for us. God bless you. Dear Lord, bless somebody here on this platform who may even be feeling lost right now. I pray that in you, oh God, they will find strength to go on. Help them to know, dear Lord, that you who formed them in their mother's womb, you know where right now what they are going through and you know where they will be in the next few months in the next few years, help them to be obedient to your calling to go. And even when they may have to pass through some uncomfortable places, some uncomfortable people, and some uncomfortable experiences, help them to know that you are right there with them through the process. And keep them faithful until they reach their destination. I thank you for your word to us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. Amen. Amen. Come on, won't you unmute your mic and give God some praise? There is some fire in the, the house. Lord, praise the Lord. Fire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sister and now elder, we want to give God much praise and thanks for your ministry this evening. Um, as you have heard, the saints have been blessed. Your word has been like you in the right season. I am sure it is springing into a whole well into our life. Thank you tonight, God. There's so much of what you've said that will carry us through this week. Don't miss the process. Come on now. So you, you ought not to miss the process and that God indeed is just setting you up for what is to come. And so we want to we want to thank God tonight so much for your ministry. We want to pray that God bless you and family and continue to keep you guys working for him and shining that light in every corner that he guides your footsteps. So may God bless you on behalf of us here on behalf of the, the church and um, our brother Weeks, who is working with us in uh, extending our invites. We want to say thank you, much thanks once again for being with us. And of course, we are looking forward to your next acceptance in advance in joining us as we continue to worship and fellowship. We are here every Sunday evening, same time, same link, different speakers, but all in the name of Jesus. So feel free. Any time to drop in, those of you who join in a little late, thank you for being here with us this evening. May God bless you truly and fully, cause your cup to overflow. And if you come across anyone this week, as you go through your week, come on, give them a word of encouragement. If someone is down, tell them, remind them, it's just a process, it's just a process. And though they may feel as if they are, they are pursuing something insignificant, with faithfulness and God will do it for them. Encourage someone this week as you go through your week. And remember, invite someone to join us next Sunday as we continue to hear from the word of God and to sub from the, the old well as he bless us. May God bless us and keep us really well. Thank you once again, preacher, for being with us. Bless you and family. Thank you once again. So God bless everyone again. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Keep us by your grace, we pray in Jesus' name. See you guys next Sunday night as we continue to worship. And 
the, our, our preacher for next week is Pastor Deborah Spooner. Pastor Deborah Spooner. Spread the word. Share the link. Spread the word. Share the link.